All right, week 19 of cycle one is in the foundations guide. It's about crystals, and we're going to build some crystals, um, just some real easy ones. You might call it seed crystals on a, a mirror using some Epsom salt. All right, so I have warm water here, and I've got a one-third cup. I'm going to measure that much Epsom salt. And then we're going to dissolve it in the warm water. And I am planning on taking hot water in some double-walled stainless steel bottles so that my classes have the warm water they need. Our sinks do not have warm water at our facility. So we're going to stir, stir, stir. Okay, and it says to stir in one to two drops of dish soap. One, two. Okay, that was good enough. So we're stirring that in. Okay, it's pretty well dissolved at this point. So now I'm going to use a cloth. I'm just going to dip the cloth in. And then I'm going to wipe it on. I'm going to kind of dab it on the um, mirror. You don't want it to be too thick or the crystals won't form. So I, you, you saw what I did, but it's not super, super thick. Some places are thinner than others. So we're going to set this aside and let it dry. You can tell them that we're going to be growing crystals. That this is going to grow us some Epsom salt crystals. But in the meantime, we can talk about crystals and minerals. And there's a few ways to do that. Nicole Liam has... Um, some great discussion and some pictures. You can easily get books on rocks and minerals and look through those. Um, you can also ask questions, oh sorry, you can also bring in building toys. So things like magnet tiles, Legos, puzzles, blocks, marble runs, those types of things. Bring those in and let the kids build their own crystal using these things. So give them a few minutes to use one of those building things and build. And then you can talk about their crystals. You can say, why did you choose to build the shape that you chose? And they're going to talk about, well, it has to do with what the shape of the individual pieces were and how they fit together. So you're limited by what shape you can make. Were there any shapes you couldn't make? Is your mineral strong or weak? Could it, could it, does it break easily? So of course, Legos are going to not break as easily as like magnetile creation would. Um, what are some of the minerals, or why are some of the minerals large while others are small? And of course, it's going to have to do with what size the individual pieces are. And who had the most building pieces available? Who had the fewest? And did the number of building pieces affect the size of the mineral? Sometimes maybe yes, sometimes no. The bigger the pieces are, the bigger the thing is, but probably you're using fewer pieces. So there's some really good discussion you can have there. And then you can talk about how the minerals that students built were different because of the types of toys they had were different. So Legos and wooden blocks, just they don't fit together because they're not the same thing. Because of this, um, each of the students had kind of like different rules for how their mineral could be made. Some toys like Legos and Connects can build to make many different kinds of shapes, but other things like puzzle pieces can really only make one or a few shapes. So this is similar to how minerals work because um, they are naturally occurring solids. And like your mineral that you made with the toys, natural minerals follow certain kinds of rules as they grow and get larger. Sometimes they will make only the kinds of shapes and bonds that their atoms can make, or that's always the case, sorry. So their shape and their other properties are determined by their chemistry. So this is, a, this is a really great discussion that you can talk about. Um, and I was actually reading from the Cornerstone lesson plan. I think this is a good one for this. I can link to that lesson plan below. Um, but there's some, there's some good discussion in here about minerals and about seed crystals. And I think that's a really great activity that would be really easy to add in as you're waiting for your minerals to dry. So I'm going to turn off the video, let my minerals dry, and then come back on and show you what it looked like. Okay, my mirror made some wonderful crystals. Um, but I did want to mention this amount of crystals probably took 30 minutes to develop. 
maybe even longer. So my suggestion is to make as thin of a layer of liquid as you possibly can for it to dry faster. It's very cool though. So you would, at the end of your time, maybe the last five minutes or so, you would pass this around in, in a magnifying glass and let kids look at the crystals and you can describe the crystals. These crystals are long and I guess kind of like prism shaped. They look like little branches coming off, little skinny. It's cool. So enjoy, make as thin of a layer as possible.